Okay, hi everyone. I just wanted to bring you along really quick. It's dusk and uh, it is so hot in the garden in Southern California here. Um, we have temperatures of 104, 106, 108 even. And um, I'm so scared for my plants, but as you can see, look at the aloe veras, they just closed up and they are stressed because of the heat, I went ahead and put this shade cloth right here just to help them out a little bit. It's ugly, but I don't care. But if you can see, look at the sense of area. It's toasted here from from where the sun has been hitting it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one closer to the house. And um, this, this aloe is, yep, pretty much, it's doing good. It's got babies coming out, but it doesn't get up so much sun because I have this sun sun sail here that I put and it does help a lot I have um, I have some casualties though these little topiaries boxwood they're not totally dry but they did get like ugh, very crunchy um, I'm gonna have to really take these out um, again if you don't work in my garden year round, I'm sorry, you can't stay. Um, my baby corals are big, but look, see how they're closed up and stressed. And the Porcha Lacari is doing okay, but that one's close to the fence. And um, I think that we are getting some water, even though I don't water these very much, especially during the heat, because if they go dormant, you overwater, then rot happens so you have to resist in overwatering even though it's so hot and you think oh they would enjoy a cool drink but I do water them um, a little bit not every day every probably two three times a week um, and at night time so that they get some you know, a respite from the heat but we had a situation that just happened here in the garden um, the poor bees, the poor bees are also trying to find, you know, water and they really were, I don't know what they were doing, but look at my, um, my hydrangea. I don't think we're going to flower, um, get flowers from it anymore. This one's doing okay because it's partially shade, but we have a lot of, uh, stuff that's not working. And look at this one here. This is another one exactly the same as the other one that um that is not a wasp behind me that's my husband fumigating with his fancy schmanchy fumigation tool thingy but yeah all this stuff is is doing okay oh my my devil's tongue got scale and i want you to see uh, at least a scale or some some type of fungus situation here so yeah, I'm gonna treat that, brush it, and really like kind of keep it apart from my other cacti because I don't want that spreading. Um, this one's doing really good, the Sansevieria. It's got new growth and, and everything, but uh, it again, it does not get a lot of sun, but it is in the heat. So there you go, Sansevierias can take heat but they do not like direct sun. They will not do well in direct sun. I'm a little concerned about this one here because while we were wetting the bees, um, they um, they got overspray and yeah, it's just hopefully, I'm pretty sure this will be bone dry tomorrow because it's been so hot and we're expecting even more heat. As you can see the fountain, I had to empty it out completely because the bees were drinking from this little fountain and they were in there and I'm talking like hundreds of bees. Um, thank goodness that um, I noticed because the kitties also stick their head in there to drink water and that must have been peril but I'm, I'm sure that um, that they know that they know to not do that. And uh, yeah, we have this situation here. The gardeners, um, they just cut on the other side. I have to go ahead and trim this side, but again, it's been so hot. We've been trying to not do that. Lemon tree is doing okay, I guess. Uh, a little wilty, and I do have to cut those bottom 
branches there. This fountain area is doing great. It is gorgeous. Uh, my Australian pearl bush is just flourishing. And these Hesper aloes are just gorgeous. They're through um, giving off any type of a bloom spike. I cut that out. And in this one, if you follow my channel, you've seen in the other tours that this one here, um, it does this every year. Like this is the rosemary. So I really have to cut this down. But if you can see, there's an, um, a new uh, growth back there. So we're just going to cut this dead thing out and leave that one there and see how it does. This the sticks on fire is humongous. Um, it was a cutting last year and I guess it rooted and it's got a humongous base because that's it's humongous. I wanted to show you here my experiment with that sense of area. Um, yeah, it did not work. Did not work. So there you go. And uh, yeah, we're just as you can see, all this water is because uh, we were kind of wetting the bees. I wanted to show you my crest and I really haven't taken a, a better look at it. I wanted to kind of like look at it and see what what was going on. Um, again, uh, I lost my totem cactus that I put there because of the overwatering from the other side, but they, I made them um, close that sprinkler and it looks like if everything's doing okay as far as rot goes. Uh, see how happy these uh, aloe veras are versus the other ones on the other side that get so much sun. These are just loving it. My um, starry yellow is doing good. They're pupping out and uh, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I really don't want to be putting poison in my yard, but we have with the heat, the ants, and just now bees and it's not cool i mean my daughter just got stung by a bunch of wasps she walked into a wasp tree uh, a nest that was hanging low on a tree and uh it, they stung her so i'm extra terrified of bees now and wasps which i've always been but i tell you um those uh dummy nests that i put up most of them got destroyed with a storm we had, but I still have one under the porch on the other side and they're working. Okay, let me show you here. Let me bring you over here and show you real quick. Um, this cypress topiary is doing okay, but it gets water almost every day with this heat. And again, a look at these um, stressed aloe veras. My uh, perii agave is back there and it's, it's doing okay. Uh, the baby, I took it out because it was too wet for some reason there. Uh, I don't know what happened. It's another aloe vera. It's a little bit stressed, but it's okay. Let me see. Uh, this martillo cactus. Oh, are you holding that for everyone? Oh, it got tangled on, on it. But, oh my goodness. Is that another crest that I see there? Or is it, that might be a, another crest or two knuckles that are going to start coming out. But. I don't know. That looks like a little, like if it's a little crested. Ooh, that'll be awesome if it crests also. See, it's got a new growth there. A lot of growth this year for that one, a lot. Okay, let me take you here and show you the disaster that's going on with the heat. This um, little ollie, olive tree is doing great even though it gets a lot of hot sun in the late afternoon. But it's doing okay. This is my, what's left of my um, bell peppers. They totally fried in this heat. And even, even this sticks on fire is not doing too good here. Um, so I think I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it towards the wall. Just get it out of this darn heat and let these go. This was a little tomato, uh, a pear, a yellow pear tomato. But check this out. look at the situation I don't know if this is excessive heat or we're watering it too much uh, we just watered them that's why this looks wet right here uh, we're gonna have to figure that out uh, what is this right here but you know what well I could tell you tomorrow if they perk up tonight 
and they're awake tomorrow, then it's, you know, just it's too darn hot. Um, but if not, because look at this, the, this plant that comes out with, uh, with ex excess of water is here because we, the water kind of runs down. Um, so I can't really tell if it's lack of water or water, but I don't water them every day. So, and with this heat again, this San Pedro cactus was doing really good. And now I see it kind of yellow. Um, it does have a baby here at the base. I don't know. And it did have, have these, uh, little like puffs of, I believe those are the seed pods. Um, my, um, Aluri. Uh, it's not uh, Aluria Procera or whatever. Um, I cut off a bunch of arms on it, and I don't know, you can't see it. I'm sorry, it's getting dark. I'm just trying to capture this before it gets too, too dark. It's not looking too good, too. Um, it's very hot right here, so poor thing. I might move it. Ah, uh, yeah. So, pretty much that's it. Oh, wait. Let me show you this up here. And uh, again, the sail really helps um this is an aloe that's in the shade not in the shade but it gets only partial sun here it's in the bed i had um veggies here but they totally fried too and this uh partial acaria is doing great this was a jasmine which didn't make it um i will be returning it because right away it started dying i don't know what happened it did not like it um even before this heat so good thing that like at Lowe's and Home Depot and those places they have like a year warranty for shrubs and stuff like that so I'm sorry to have to take it back but I'm gonna that was a jasmine trailing jasmine that I was hoping to put on my trellis but it's not gonna happen um, okay so yeah this is the nighttime garden so it still looks beautiful even though it's been so hot so bad for my plants but really I feel bad for the for the little animals and the people too of course um, yeah these are doing okay I took these um, agavoides and this um, Sahara and I would think I was able to save it and I think the mom's doing good too she got a little bit sad in the back but I'll, I'll go show you let me see if I don't know if you can see the fountain we don't have it's gonna get a little bit dark I'm sorry um, yeah here's the mama and look at the, the uh, how beautiful the African candelabra euphorbia is it's amazing how these are like so sturdy because they have that little wood circle that really like reinforces like a little column of wood inside that just makes them stand strong gorgeous and you see Terry could you please step over there on the light so the light will turn on from the porch so I could keep recording okay this is good that it, there's no light because I wanted to show you something here on the wall I wanted to show you um, this awesome thing that we got at Grandin Road for Halloween uh, we decided to put it on the fence here like if it's not scary enough out, out here right now but um, yeah and this sticks on fire Ugh, gorgeous you can't tell but it's almost touching that tree already and all these trees they have me terrified already because I don't want bees to nest in them and attack me when I'm out here my baby blue is gorgeous so okay so this is the porch area and I just wanted to show you my ficus elastica and my sense of area collection that I do have out here and it is doing good for the most part uh, the night owl has been very sensitive to the heat um, more like overwatering because I went on vacation um, a couple of weeks ago and um, my husband did an excellent job of watering them but some of them are a little bit um, finicky and again if you water them inside the crown they will get rot you have to do it on the base kind of far away from the plant is the safest way to water them 
this I noticed that this one was very stressed and um, yeah apparently this was a cutting that I never planted so and it had developed zero roots but it's still alive um, yeah I'm gonna try to clean it up and then just stick it in the ground and it's dormant so yeah my Easter cactus and copper spoons and some cylindrica uh, some stapelia here the stapelia, um, again, I don't know if you've watched my videos. You know, it's very prone to mealybug. Uh, oh, these aeoniums seem like if they're awake. And the uh, mama, the Sahara mama, Echeveria, or Echeveria, is doing good. I have my string of bananas. They're a little bit sad, but they're very long. I think I have to restart them. Here in this... Um, still you're seeing my devil's tongue cactus and it was attacked by either uh, it looks like scale scale or some type of a mildew okay so here you're looking at a daytime view and I did get most of that stuff off but as you can see it still has some uh, residue of the scale and just in case some of those are alive, I'm going to give it another hit with some, a little bit of alcohol in that soap solution and water and just brush it on. And I want to do this at uh, nighttime when it, there's no danger of it getting any type of sun so that it won't burn any further. But I'd hate to lose this one because it was really small when I bought it. And although it's been everywhere in the ground in pots and here, there and everywhere. Um, it's it's alive so but here you're looking at a close-up of that nastiness and it's really hard to tell because where the scales come out it has a little fluffy white buildup that is not mealybug that is just how the scales um, grow but don't confuse it when it's all over it is that um, darn scale and you have to treat it or it will spread Okay, so now we're going to just go ahead and I'm going to show you um, in the daytime, this uh, this is my, my little um, area that gets more sun. And as you can see at night, you I don't know if you could tell, this is a daytime view and um, they're still stressed, they're gray. And you're going to see the contrast between the other ones that are on the other side. And all that water overflow is just... Um, water that um, I water in between the pots so that the kitties can be in a you know have a little area where they can lay down in this darn heat um, so let me take you to this side that we saw um, that way you can get a better view we saw this last night but it's uh, totally different in the day so I wanted to give you that contrast so you can see um, everything seems to be doing good. Um, I do wet all these stones and everything during the day so that it gets, you know, there's a little bit of freshness back here. It doesn't get direct sun, so it, you know, it doesn't get steamy. It just helps. And this is what this guy looks like during the day. And again, my baby blue eucalyptus, gorgeous. And yep, this little creature, we're gonna let him, I'm not gonna trim him, but he's growing pretty good as you can see. This is the one that's almost touching the tree. And there's a few of these um, little branches I can clean up, but um, I'll do that, you know, in the fall after the heat. And my Mexican fence post, I was worried that it was going to be growing crooked, but it's straightening out. Um, the light is bright here, and it gets some sun, but for the most part, those trees are so big that they're shading most of this area is dappled, which can be good and bad for some of these plants, so hopefully it won't affect my eucalyptus tree. And yeah, here you're seeing all these trees, and we're walking here back to this area. I do have uh, portulacarias and uh, sticks on fire back here. And this sticks on fire is out of control. 
it is just bushy and ugly from the bottom um, these two were cuttings as you can see this one and the one on the side and the one on the side is growing better it's growing um, upright you know kind of skinny and that's kind of what we want I don't want it to be out of control like this but now is not the time to touch any of these plants and cut them up or anything unless it's totally required do it and then just you know stick your cuttings in the shade and here we go with uh, these aeoniums if you saw my videos in the past you would see when i planted these and these were all cuttings and as you can see they look like if they're not dormant they look pretty open pretty nice um, they do have some dead leaves at the bottom and ooh, i see one there that's and see it's dormant that like brownish purplish color that one is probably not getting moisture or it hasn't made contact with the soil and has zero roots here you're looking at the mama again see that she does get some some light but it's dappled again so i think she'll be okay can always move her but i think she'll be okay these aeoniums look good too oh here you're seeing uh, cutty that, cutting that rotted and what happened is that this one I just placed it in there as a cutting and never planted it never stuck it completely in the ground I just like laid it there and it it went dormant it did not have time to develop roots I am not trying to clean any of the stuff because um, my goal is just to tape this really quick for you guys and then head inside because it's so hot um, but everything seems to be doing okay um, this uh, lily pad aeonium, oh, bone dry. Uh, this one again, same situation. I did not stick it in the soil, so we're going to do that now. It is dormant, though. You can see the difference in the color. This stapelia, I was almost going to say that um, it was doing fantastic, but I noticed that it has a little bit of mealybug. And this one, again, is very prone to it if you overwater it. It will get full of that but we'll just go ahead and hit it with our alcohol and soap and water solution and it it should be fine down here I have copper spoons and oh this uh, aeonium these were all cuttings too and they did not have time to actually root it got too hot and they got too much Sun and I had to bring them back here because they were not doing good uh, but they should be okay. They're pretty tough. And yep, pretty much. Um, my ficus elastica, I have several of these. Um, and um, I brought them outside because they want more light than what I have inside. So I didn't want them to die. They were dropping a bunch of leaves and they're doing great out here even though it's so hot they're staying alive and I can feel that they still have a little bit of moisture in the soil so I'm gonna not water them until maybe tomorrow um, yes I don't want to keep them soggy because they don't like like soggy feet but I don't want to overwater them and this one here is um, my beautiful little combo with my uh, coral, uh, black coral sansevarium. It has a night owl, bental sensation, and um, the bental sensation. I put it out here because when I purchased it, it was a little damaged. And um, it seems, oh, it's got new growth. If you can see in there, it's got two new um, spears coming out, which is great because I really love this one, but it was very finicky inside, so. All right, um, so that's pretty much uh, what's been going on in the garden. Um, keep cool, people, and take care of your plants just enough to keep them alive. Um, this should be, the next couple of weeks should be um, the end of our so hottest today times is here to in be the garden. Very warm, 106. And I wanted to show you um, how these made out. Um, this is the day after the first video. And they perked up somewhat. 
Um, if you can see in the other video, they were kind of, you know, leaning over. And I didn't water him. I can see that it's still very wet there. You know what? I feel they're getting water from the back. Hmm. I don't know. I have to ask my husband and see if he watered these yesterday. Or, I don't know. Um, he said he didn't, so. Okay, I just wanted to show you that really quick. And Okay, um, it's going to be a blistering day. The trees are starting to lose their leaves. They're just like crunching up, so it's a mess of leaves. And today is Labor Day. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my videos and have a fantastic Labor Day. And um, welcome to all the new subscribers. Please remember to just leave a like and leave a little heart or a comment below. It helps the algorithm and we can get these videos out to more people. I really do try to show you guys what works for me and hopefully it'll help you guys. Oh, 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 oh. There's a wasp behind me. All right, have a fantastic day.